The day you finally realize that the Earth is flat and that NASA is lying to us, they never went to the moon, you're gonna set yourself free. The spaceships that NASA builds to go to the moon cannot possibly withstand the thousands and thousands and thousands of degrees of temperature that there are in between the Earth and the moon. That's called the Van Allen Belt. Look it up. No, there's no material on Earth that can withstand that type of heat. I'm talking 36,000 degrees or something like that. Not to mention the fact after passing all that distance in that scorching hot degrees, they have to make it through that somehow alive to get to the moon, land on it, walk on it, transmit a TV signal in 1968. Sure, sure. Set yourselves free. The Earth is flat, my friends. Love you. Mark safe from believing NASA landed anything on the moon today. NASA means not a space agency. Hey, look, man, I've got a serious, serious question, okay? You know the Chicago skyline, right? Well, it's 59 miles across, okay? Right here on Google, it says, giving the Earth's curve, it should be 2,320 feet below the horizon, but you can see it, obviously. This right here is 56 miles. This is using the Earth curve calculator. 2,000 feet should be covered by the curve, yet we can still see this. You know what else is cool? One of these NASA documents right here. I'm not going to take anything out of context, but uh, a flat, non-rotating Earth. Uh, Y'all just go read that and see for yourselves. So the Willis Tower right there is 1,451 feet, right? And it's supposed to be 2,000 feet below sea level. So that means that the, the it should be 500 foot above it. So how how is that possible? I really would like to hear some good uh, observations and points without all the trash talking, you know what I mean? How about we come together and figure this thing out? Ball Earth believers seem not to understand how airplanes fly. They think when an airplane fly over the flat Earth, the pilot has to be constantly steering the airplane right or left. No, this is not how an airplane flies on the flat Earth. As an example, let's look at this flight from Quito in Ecuador to Nairobi in Kenya. Both cities are right at the equator. The way it's done is like this. You trace a straight line between the two cities. This is called a great circle route. A great circle route is a straight line cutting through the latitude lines. As you can see, there's no need to be constantly steering the airplane to the right or to the left. On the other hand, if we pick the same two cities on the ball earth, we have a problem. The pilot would have to be constantly adjusting the nose of the airplane downwards due to the curvature of the earth. There is no other way around this since earth curves 8 inches per mile squared. Since we know airplanes do not adjust for the curvature of the earth, we know that the earth is flat. Just remember, on the flat earth you draw a straight line between the two cities and fly straight and level. On the ball earth, the pilot has to be constantly adjusting the nose down due to the curvature of the ball earth. Since we know airplanes do not adjust for the curvature of the earth, we know that the earth is flat. This is how you fly an airplane. You go from point number one to point number two. You don't keep flying in circles around the North Pole. Look at Amelia Earhart's flight route around the plane. When flying due east or west, you fly straight to your destination. From there you go to the next destination. What up fam, real time, you're looking at light and magnetism. We got a ring magnet, putting it over this feral cell and it shows you these magnetic field lines displaying a torus. So here in the middle, you're looking at the North Pole. If we were able to take this magnet and flip it on its side, we'd be able to see the North and the South Pole such as and we were looking at it from a top view seeing that north pole now what i wanted to point out is in the middle of every magnetic field there's something called a block wall right there right in the middle of every magnetic field and again and again this one's pretty cool you got a bar magnet with a ring magnet around it and you actually experience the top half of the torus and the bottom and again in the middle that being that block wall it's the block wall it's the plane of inertia it's static, it doesn't move, it's the Earth. It's where we reside and we experience the top half of that magnetic field. Here we got a military document, propagation of electromagnetic fields over a flat Earth, specifically a dielectric plane, which is what that block wall is in the magnetic field. 
So if it's a globe that's curving, why are they assuming a flat earth or a dielectric plane? So as a reminder, we live in the middle of this double torus and we experience the top half. That's why when we map out the position of the sun, it actually falls within that torus field again. We also got the ISS perfectly falling within those magnetic field lines as well. And now the planets, which are just wandering stars, also fall perfectly within those magnetic field lines. How beautiful is that? There's all of them at once. All right, so check this out. Quantum field geometry in 3D Euclidean space of a dipole magnet as observed with the ferro lens, which is what lets you see those magnetic field lines. Look what's in the middle, that block wall, the dielectric plane, we experience the top half. That's where we live. This is positive evidence that we live on a plane that's in the center of creation, experiencing the top half of the magnetic field. You can say nah -uh all you want, it doesn't change the facts. So if you guys actually want to learn about this stuff, go download the Flat Earth Clock app. It's super legit. And use referral code 46731. No, I've said this before. I do not get paid for this. Relax, Globers. Another pilot proves Flat Earth. Do that thing, man, that keeps you up at night. That thing that bothers you, man, that makes you trip. You can't quit thinking about it. You always, that thing, man, that you wake up in the middle of the night, you got a new idea. That's what you got to chase. Cause anything I've been researching and telling people that the earth is not a globe for more than three years now. And it see, never ceases to amaze me the amount of people that have the response of, haven't you seen a boat disappear on the ocean? And it's the sim most simple experiment you can do for yourself anyone can do it you take a camera with a good zoom you might have like a nikon and you zoom in where you thought that boat disappeared and it's right there then you can just find random spots on the horizon way out in the ocean miles and miles away where the curve should should make things disappear you bring in random boats ships you see the whole boat there's no curve, never has been a curve. Water is level, the earth is flat, 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 besides the mountains and the valleys. But water's flat. Water does not curve around anything, except for a waterfall. Read your Bible, it says the earth isn't a globe as well, and love everyone. Globe believers cannot provide proof that the earth is actually traveling around the sun. No experiment can prove Earth's movement. The observation is that we can't tell here in this room whether we are moving or not. That it is not possible to conduct any experiment to tell you whether you are moving or not. No experiment you can do. We could look at the decay of a radioactive nucleus or some electricity and magnetism or bounce a ball, have a pendulum, whatever it is. And there's no experiment you can do to tell you whether you're moving or not. And there's no experiment you can do to tell you whether you're moving or not. And that, well, that's led Einstein to relativity. Wow. So that, that's the, the basis of general relativity, which is our best theory of... Which is our best theory of... Because you can't measure it. They tell us right to our face that there are no satellites in space. All so-called satellite communication is based on undersea cables, towers, and computer network. Teach, why, why are you telling me this? Did your neighbor say something to you? No, he wasn't home. But he has a satellite phone I thought could help us. I tried to use it, but it didn't work even though it had enough juice. Now the whole point of a satellite phone is that you always have a signal if you have a clear view of the sky, which I did. The only reason why it wouldn't work is if our satellites got knocked out of commission. Our satellites. You think something happened to our satellites? The ones in space? The satellites are networked to computers down here. The satellites are networked to computers down here. 
satellites are networked to computers down here. The Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar. The Bible tells us that God cannot lie, yet man tells us there is no firmament. God tells us in the beginning of the Bible, there is a firmament with waters above and waters below. Man tells us that water encompasses, encompasses the entire earth. Yet God tells us in the book of Job, he hath compassed the water with bounds. Says there's a boundary around the waters, which keep the waters in place. Which, by the way, is why the Arctic Circle is called the Arctic Circle. There's a circle around the earth. It's almost like we're in a, a little island on a pond, essentially. Anyways, do you think people that call God a liar get to go to heaven? Do you think that's okay? I would take a deeper look at where we live if I was you. I have a question for you, man. You know what NASA means in the Hebrew? I do not. It means to deceive. Really? Yes, it does. To deceive. To deceive. It's not good. Can someone please explain this to me? So we are told that the Earth spins at a thousand miles an hour. Check this out. So if we take a flight from California to New York and then New York back to California, Science tells us that the flight from California to New York isn't longer. But you would think because the Earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour with us going east to New York. If you don't get it simply, we would just have a hard time catching up to New York. It's simply not because apparently gravity pulls the atmosphere with the plane perfectly with the spin of the Earth. But you guys have a serious problem going from New York back to California. That means you would be going against the spin of the earth, meaning that the flight should be shorter. So basically, get in your plane, get in the air, and have California come to you. Like, do you see the problem here? Is that why NASA assumes in all of their documents a flat, non-rotating earth? Like, this report documents the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating earth point mass of flight trajectory is strictly confined in a vertical plane on a non-rotating flat earth but why assume a flat non-rotating earth when this has been proven i'm not buying it oh this is a good one like if this was truly reality like spinning a thousand miles an hour at the equator, chasing the sun at 500,000 miles an hour while orbiting the sun at 67,000 miles an hour, don't you think it would be easy to prove? Not only that, prove in court? Well, I'm here today to tell you, absolutely not. This was Thompson v. Garcia 2019 court case. But what happened here was, Zen Garcia held a contest for $5,000 Thompson sued him for $15,000 and not only lost once, but twice. In the rules of the contest, all that Zen Garcia wanted was to prove curvature of the earth with a given radius of 3,959 miles. And the reason that Thompson lost? Because he tried to prove earth's curvature by using a computer software. So guys, we don't want your computer software. We don't want your pretty math equations. We want some real world experiments that prove curvature to the earth. So again, all I'm trying to say is, if this is truly reality, I feel like it would be obvious, right? And I feel like it would be easy to prove and wouldn't lose in court if we were really on a space ball flying through space. This is the ancient Japanese depiction of Mount Meru aka the Tree of Life. It has had many names through many cultures. In Norse it was known as Yggdrasil, in ancient Buddhism it were called Sri Meru. It is now known as the Rups Nigra which was first described by John Dee as a 33 mile wide magnetic black rock in a letter to Mercator. This is the real reason your compass points north, and Polaris is known as the Pole Star. Everything literally is energy, and you are that energy in physical form. This is the truth the globe lie hides from us. We live in the most beautiful clock ever made, and the creator of the clock hides within us all.
It's time to unbind your mind and see this visual demonstration of a magnetic north pole on a flat earth. Oh, you mean like this? Is that what you're referring to? All the way around? Lining up with the latitudes, just like the compass? Because there's only one fixed direction? To the center source of the magnetic field created by the, you know, the source magnet? the point charge, whatever you want to call it. Strange how the uh, equator lines up too, huh? Weird. Very strange. Looks like I have the exact same thing that you said I wasn't doing happening on the screen. Weird. Very strange. Strange coincidence. Oh, wait a second. My compass seems to be pointing in one direction like it always does the bar magnet attracts iron at both sides because it's two different magnet fields orientational polarizability one fixed direction Wait a minute, hold up. So the people on the ISS aren't floating around because of zero gravity. Silly me. Why would I think there's zero gravity on the ISS? Because well, they're floating around, but that's not why they're floating around. <laughs> what? Nothing is as it seems, people. Clear to your listeners that we're not, there's gravity up here. There's almost as much gravity here as there is on Earth, but we're going so fast, about a little over 17,000 miles an hour, that we're basically falling around the planet. So it's a little bit like you're in an elevator. And somehow the cable breaks, the elevator starts falling down. And while you're in the elevator, you're weightless. You're like this. You're like a grab. Now, the good news is the elevator never gets to the bottom here in space, so we just keep falling around. But there is gravity, but not very, we call it microgravity because the effects are basically offset by us. So the reason why they experience weightlessness is because they are going 17,000 miles an hour constantly around the curve so they're always falling and that's how they remain weightless the flat earth map dates back over 1000 years this map is credited to being created by a persian astronomer his name was al biruni and he lived between 973 a.d to 1048 a.d it's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idi Alenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now, and order one of the items. I humbly thank you. <laughs>